just buy Tonte Good morning folks. It's been fairly hectic this week and I've not really had a chance to grab the camera and do much filming for you guys. That's mainly because I was in somewhat of a rush to get the pilot kit finished in order for us to utilise it on an upcoming Retford Heritage Day which is happening this Saturday and here at Harrison's Brewery in the Brew Shed we're going to be opening the doors and allowing people to come in and we're going to be doing a few brewery tours throughout the day whilst at the same time hopefully good timing cooler while at the same time hopefully having the pilot kit active and brewing a batch of beer for everybody to see so most of the pilot kit is complete but I'm going to have to leave it for a while at least for today to try and get an idea of what stock I've got because next week we need to brew proper on the big kit and I'm not going to be able to do that without grain, malt and hops and I don't have any yeast either so I'm going to put together a list of requirements today and then maybe later on in the afternoon we might just have time to have a recap on the pilot kit maybe a little tinker on there I need to sort out the water intake so that's not majorly important at the moment I can of course just use the hose pipe give you a quick spin around we've got it on the wall over there so needs must we can do that I've also got a few banners that we need to put up on the wall to advertise exactly what uh, awards we've won this year for the pub namely County Nottinghamshire County Pub of the Year I've also got one to put up on the side of the canal you know the wall that we built this year we're going to suspend it on there because this year Retford Heritage Day is focusing very much on the canal and, uh, and the trade and everything else that the canal has brought to Retford. Over the past 300 years we have the Chesterfield Canal running through the town by the way. It's worth looking up on Wikipedia if you fancy it. It's, uh, it's quite a feat of engineering which they are still in the process of restoring. Anyway, I'm going to continue to get this stock take completed. I'm going to go and try and order some materials, some ingredients for beers this week. And then we'll just probably brew the vacant, the bitter and the bog standard beers. I call them bog standard. We know they're all great. But we'll probably just brew the ordinary beers this week. And then next week, once I've decided how we're going to ferment, we may just decide to get the pilot kit out and start developing some new recipes perhaps for Christmas and the new year and we can trial them trial them in the pub and focus a little bit more on beer within the channel rather than welding and fabrication although I'm not ruling any new projects out just yet so uh, well we'll see you in a tick when the man with the clipboard has finished his job. So just utilising a spare two minutes where I show you the banners that we've put up to let Chance have a little bit of a wee wee. Don't go in there buddy. So this is one approach to the back of the brew shed along the Chesterfield Canal and as you come through the bridge we're just on the other side of the water on the left as you can see there are some lovely boats moored up in the marina. And there we have it. So that's the sign we've just put up over there. Nottinghamshire County Pub of the Year. Maybe it needs straightening a little bit. I'll go and do that shortly. And obviously we're well into September now, so all the lush vegetation is looking ready for a trim back but the beer garden is still as fantastic as ever and look at that for a view it just doesn't get boring at all even on a muggy day like today and here we've stuck one on the outside as well but I'm not stopping 
because of the traffic. Jans! Seriously distracted by this pilot kit. It's becoming quite uh, a bit of a head bungle. So here we've got the hoses on the HLT looking pretty smart. Everything's connected apart from that because I've just put some elbows on the intakes. So that hose could be shortened just a touch. But it's not really that important. And then on the outlet we're going into the Herms coil. And we're coming out of the Herms coil and going back into the research port. And inside we've got some caustic. It's out there ready for a clean. We've got a couple of hoses cut here on the mash tun. They're just long enough to reach the inlet and outlet here and from the outlet to either the recirc port on the Herms, the recirc port on the mash tun or indeed the inlet on the boil kettle. And then this, excuse the noise while I sit down, this is where all the time has gone today. So you can see that we've got the pump at the back here and uh, the pump is fed by the duplex filter system which in turn is fed by that discoloured hose somewhat I'm going to buy some new hose when I've got chance and that's fed from the bottom port the takeoff port in the kettle there that comes down into the duplex filter and then what I've done in order to be able to see the sight glass is I've taken the extension bar which is there that we were going to use for a whirlpool arm and instead I've brought it up here I've put a 90 on it and I've put the sight glass on there with the valve at the top nice and accessible because there's so much going on this end the boil kettle end I wanted to make sure I could get to it easily and then coming out of the other side of the sight glass we have a hose going in to what is now the whirlpool port or the recirculation port of the mat of the boil kettle and this hose will also disconnect and reach around to the inlet of the plate chiller so the plate chiller has been wrapped to the frame with some metal tie wraps so the inlet is left open and on the outlet we've introduced yet another valve we may have to reposition that if these two foul each other which it looks like they may do at some point I think we'll get away with that and then on the outlet I spent a little bit of time and I made this little assembly so because on the mash tun we don't need the digital output thermometer I've decided to take that off and make a little piece of uh, stainless steel tubing through a half inch to quarter inch BSP stainless steel adapter if you can see that I'm sure you can and uh, that pokes through the other end it's in there honestly see if I can get some light in there so you can just about see inside that uh, is a thermal well in there now and that reaches almost to where my thumb is so the flow will be coming in through this section here being diverted by the T section and coming out here to either back into the tank or to a fermenter and that just points down to drip away and the reason that points down is because from a standing position when I'm observing the whole kit I can look down and there we have the output temp 18.7 degrees C so as you can see from where I'm stood this is the busy end the boil kettle where the plate chiller the duplex filter the sight glass the thermometer all of that is busy there but we can still get in to observe the boil and we can still get in to add hops and what have you and we'll be doing the double tip from the rear so it's not going to become a problem when the tanks tip backwards all of this is missed thankfully so you can see it'll be pretty snazzy to work on 
We'll see, the proof of the pudding will be in the eating this weekend. So I really am nervous about getting the kit up and running for the first time with Joe Public on site. It should be fine though, but just in case, I'm just gonna brew our best bitter. Nothing special, just our beer. If it comes out the other side okay, then what we can do is a side by side and see if we actually got the same flavor profile for our best bitter as we, on, the, on the pilot kit as we do on the big 500 litre kit. And if that's the case, then I think that'll be a good run in for the kit, for the pilot kit, and we'll be able to understand then that yes, we are getting similar results, or we can expect similar results when we finally scale up and do a little bit more playing around. So there we go, folks, it's late. This is one of the reasons why I've not had the camera out for the past few days. So you'll have, have to excuse me, I think I mentioned it earlier on, but if I didn't keep it in, then the reason is we've had all this build going on. We're building up to uh, Retford's Heritage Day and we, I was away on the weekend and I'm not getting home from work until seven, eight, nine o'clock sometimes because I'm really trying to get all this stuff hammered out and done so I can concentrate on making some product. We need to do some product. So it's been a bit of a stressful couple of weeks intermittently uh, divided up by spending the weekend away. I did Leeds the weekend before as well, so it's my fault, yeah, I'm not looking for sympathy here, you know, but I need to get back on it, so unfortunately I just had to keep the camera in the bag for a day or two, but it's out now, this video will be up in the morning day or two after for you guys on YouTube uh, but thanks for sticking with me I know you're not going anywhere I know you're not going anywhere oh and by the way today's vlog is the 500th vlog that I've made can you imagine a eh? fancy keeping that up 500 days of making vlog videos quite an achievement I suppose I was also anchoring about I wanted to do something good for the 500th vlog but quite frankly I've got enough on my plate at the minute. I don't really need to be doing some fancy pant uh, Casey Nadsack editing. No, no, <laughs> none of that's gonna be happening. We'll leave that to Tom. So uh, yeah, anyways, 500 videos, and I think we're just about to hit 10,000 subscribers as well. Another big, big milestone. Also looks like I'm gonna have to invest in a few m new batteries for the Canon, because that's two I've had go on me in a couple of minutes. Anyway, folks, uh, thanks for tuning in. I'm going to wrap it up before this battery dies. And we'll be back tomorrow with another vlog of me panicking about getting this place looking spick and span. Because we do have mess. We do have mess. It's a bit crazy. And I've got some more things to talk about tomorrow as well concerning the boggart hole casks that we bought on auction. But that will have to wait until tomorrow. Cheers. We'll see you then.